Good morning students this is your teacher Neela Melawat and today I have come with another part of the chapter that is sexual reproduction in flowering plants the last topic of this chapter and this is the last module of this chapter dear students where we'll be talking about the post fertilization events okay yesterday till yesterday we have spoken about the pollination fertilization that is called the double fertilization isn't it but today we'll be talking about the post fertilization structures and the events i hope uh, you are revising with me and there is there is no doubt are you ready students and even if students there is doubt even if you have a doubt please let me know please uh, inform me on my personal number okay so i'll definitely try to solve your queries otherwise i'm expecting that you are revising with me and there is 100% concept clarity and you are ready to face your exams which are starting from 15th of may okay everyone fine so let's start now coming to the post fertilization events as i said that we'll talk about the events that are occurring after the fertilization now after the double fertilization has occurred so there are three processes will be occurring one is your endosperm development okay after this there will be endosperm develop that is develop events of endosperm and embryo development okay so that is your your the events of endosperm plus your embryo development second right second is a maturation of ovules into seed and ovary into free fruit which is called seed formation or fruit formation so both will be occurring simultaneously okay so first is embryo development second is your embryogeny and the embryogeny is called development of the embryo and third is the seed formation along with the fruit formation so these events they are referred to as post fertilization events now coming to the endosperm development students we always remember that the development of the endosperm precedes embryo development means first your embryo will be formed okay first embryo will be sorry first your first your endosperm will be formed okay and afterwards embryo will be formed okay so first the endosperm will be uh, formed and then the embryo will be formed can you tell me students why this happens why there is always that is a endosperm is formed first and the embryo is later terms okay never mind see endosperm the primary endosperm it divides repeatedly and forms a triploid endosperm tissue so this will form your prime triploid endosperm tissue okay this will form triploid endosperm tissue and this tissue this tissue will contain large amount of food materials that will supply to the growing embryo so in in, in general terms we can say that the endosperm contains the reserve food material for the development of the embryo clear so it contains the reserve food material for the development of the embryo clear everyone so first the endosperm will be formed then embryo will be formed then the growth of the embryo will start because why because the endosperm will divide and will form triploid endosperm tissue and this triploid endosperm tissue will contain large amount of reserve food material for the growth of the embryo okay now next coming to this this endosperm nucleus now this endosperm nucleus is having 3n okay because three three structures have fused can you name those three structures because it forms triploid endosperm tissue just now i told you that it will divide it divide repeatedly and form triploid endosperm nucleus 
so your endosperm is having 3n okay it again divides to form the endosperm okay that's 3n will divide 3n will divide to form the endosperm and this endosperm will store large amount of food material as it occurs in case of the maize okay as it occurs in case of maize let's see now now first of all how does it occur how what are the basic steps first of all the pan what is pan primary endosperm nucleus what is pan primary endosperm nucleus okay it is called the pan is primary endosperm nucleus now this will undergo nuclear divisions okay pan will undergo nuclear divisions to form free nuclei okay to form the free nuclei clear is it clear everyone and then the cell wall formation will occur cw is your cell wall so first the pen will undergo nuclear divisions and it will form the free nuclei clear and this will be called as free nuclear endosperm what do we call it as free nuclear endosperm and afterwards the cell wall formation will occur clear second is second what will happen next very good the number of free nuclei formed varies greatly okay the number of you can see the nuclei which are formed they will vary greatly okay so first in the subsequent divisions followed by the cell wall formation so tab tak ye structure cellular form assume karega clear then in between the above two that is between this nuclear and cellular division there is a transverse wall micropyle and chalizal chamber okay ek wall develop ho jayegi between them as it occurs in case of coconut right then we call it as yahan par hum jo endosperm hai usko hum cellular endosperm bhi kehte hain clear this is also called as cellular endosperm clear okay this is you can see in peanut they are showing you the endosperm so in between the above two stages that is your nuclear endosperm and the cellular endosperm there is helobial structure is formed that is a transverse wall develops between the micropyle and the chalizal end clear in some species the endosperm is fully consumed during the embryo formation kuch aisi species hain kuch aise plants hain jinme endosperm completely consume ho jata hai jab embryo ki formation hoti hai while in some it may remain it may persist in a mature seed kuch seeds mein ye persist karta hai till maturation kin jo seeds hain jinme ye completely consume ho jata hai that is your pea in in pea plant your complete endosperm will be consumed while in castor and coconut in case of castor and coconut the perisperm or you can say the endosperm it is partially consumed it is partially consumed the embryogeny means formation of embryo now embryo develops at the micropylar end of the embryo sac okay the embryo will develop at the micropylar end of the sac where your zygote is present okay and most of the embryo or you can say most zygotes they divide only when a certain amount of endosperm has been formed and as i told you first endosperm will develop and then your embryo will develop because m uh, this uh, m uh, sorry the endosperm contains reserve food material for the growth of the embryo clear okay now first of all what happens now zygote will divide see this is your zygote this zygote will divide and form two cells the one cell is called terminal cell another is called basal cell then this will further divide 
and will form a pro embryo structure and it will form a pro embryo structure okay everyone what it will form it will form a pro embryo structure so zygote will divide and it will form a pro embryo structure then it will further divide to form the globular stage of globular embryo so sabse pehle hamare paas zygote hai zygote mein division hoga theek hai zygote will divide and it will form pro embryo okay then pro embryo will divide and it will form globular embryo it will form globular embryo okay everyone so first the zygote will divide and this will give rise to a pro embryo then subsequently it will form the globular embryo and then it will form a heart shaped embryo this is your heart shaped embryo okay this is your sh heart shaped embryo and then heart shaped embryo will form a mature embryo okay i hope you remember the stages zygote will undergo the division and it will form pro embryo so first second pro embryo will then form the globular embryo the globular embryo will then then form the heart shaped embryo and the heart shaped embryo will then form the mature embryo okay is it clear okay coming to the embryo cell as i said pro embryo will be formed the first which has undifferentiated cells then you will have a globular one then you have a heart shaped embryo and finally you have mature embryo so this is how the stages are there so zygote divides to form pro embryo then it forms a globular embryo which then forms heart shaped embryo and finally the mature embryo now coming to the uh, see the embryo could be dicot or monocot your plant if the plant is a dicot then it will form a dicot embryo if the plant is monocot it will form a monocot embryo so let's study the structure of dicot embryo first then we'll study the structure of monocot embryo now your dicot embryo consists of two parts one is your embryonal axis and second is cotyledons let's see where is the embryonal axis just look into the diagram see cotyledons they are there isn't it so two cotyledons are there we can easily see there are two cotyledons one is this one and second is this one so there are two cotyledons and it consists of the embryonal axis where is the embryonal axis now this is your embryonal axis this complete structure so dicot embryo contains an embryonal axis and two cotyledons now the portion of the embryonal axis which is above the above the cotyledons right this portion it is above the cotyledons so it is called epicotyle what do we call it as epicotyle the part of the embryonal axis which is above the cotyledons is called epicotyle okay it is called epicotyle okay now this epicotyle will later form the plumule ye jo aapki epicotyle hai ye baad mein kya banayegi plumule banayegi aur plumule se aapki stem banegi clear and the portion which is below which is below your cotyledons is called radical or you can say hypocotyle okay the portion below the below the cotyledons is called hypocotyle now this hypocotyle will terminate to form the radical and this radical will then form the roots so your radical will form roots plumule will form the stem or shoot okay everyone so a dicot embryo consists of two parts the embryonal axis and the two cotyledons the portion above the cotyledons is called epicotyle it will then form the plumule okay epicotyle will terminate to form the plumule plumule will form the stem the part below the cotyledons is called hypocotyle which will terminate into radical and radical will form the roots now coming to a monocot embryo okay now your monocots they basically contain one cotyledon so monocots they have one cotyledon and dicots have two cotyledons 
so monocots they have one cotyledon for example the family of grass family okay the grass family comes under the monocotyledons they are monocots so grass family comes under the monocots in case of grass family the cotyledon is called as scutellum jo aapka cotyledon hai use kya kaha jata hai scutellum kaha jata hai theek hai the cotyledon is called the scutellum okay clear and the other side contains the radical now radical will have the root cap okay and the root cap will have a undifferentiated portion of the cell which is called coleoriza and this coleoriza which is containing undifferentiated sheath of cells will later on form the roots and the portion of the embryonal axis see here your scutellum is attaching isn't it so the portion which is above the attachment of scutellum is called epicotyle okay it is called epicotyle kya kehte hain ise epicotyle this together these two structures they will together form the epicotyle okay these two together structures will form the epicotyle now epicotyle has a has a part which is called coleoptyle okay it has a part which is called the shoot apex which is called epicotyle okay it is called the epicotyle has a shoot which is called a shoot apex and and a hollow foliar structure which is called coleoptyle so aapke epicotyle ke do parts hain ek shoot apex and the second is coleoptyle so now we have discussed regarding the the monocot embryo and the dicot embryo now here there are generally they will ask you two questions what is the difference between coleoriza and coleoptyle your coleoptyle is a part of epicotyle while your coleoriza is a part of is a part of your radical portions and it will it might result in the formation of root while this will result in the formation of shoot okay so you must be very very clear coleoptyle and coleoriza coleoptyle stem coleoriza root now coming to the seed formation okay let's come to the seed formation now in angiosperm plants the seed is the final product of sexual reproduction okay everyone we have done so much the plant is doing so much it has pollination and fertilization just spending large amount of energy this is just to make the seeds because seeds are the final product of the reproduction and these seeds they are present inside the fruit seeds jo hain wo aapke fruit ke andar maujood hote hain okay and your typical seed consist of three things aapka jo seed hai usme teen cheeze hoti hain there are three things in seed one very first thing is your seed coat second is your cotyledons and third is your embryo so your seed basically has three parts the seed coat the cotyledons and the embryo okay so this is your embryo along with your cotyledons this portion depicts your cotyledons then this is a food reserve material and at the micropylar end there is an opening this opening will supply the oxygen to the oxygen and the water to the growing for the germination rather right and these integuments they will really later form the seed coat to hamari jo seed hai usme teen portions important hai seed coat cotyledons embryo now seeds can be categorized into two basic types one is endospermic seed or non embryonic seed this is your first category हम दो तरीके की सीड्स को कैटेगराइज कर सकते हैं सीड्स को दो उसमें फर्स्ट इज नॉन एंडोस्पर्मिक सीड और नॉन एल्ब्यूमिनस सीड ठीक है इज इट क्लियर नॉन एल्ब्यूमिनस सीड और दी नॉन एंडोस्पर्मिक सीड जिन सीड्स में एंडोस्पर्म कंप्लीटली कंज्यूम हो जाता है ठीक है जिन सीड्स में आपका एंडोस्पम इफ यू रिमेंबर आई टोल्ड यू एंडोस्पम जो इसमें फूड मटेरियल होता है स्टोर्ड फूड मटेरियल होता है तो अगर सीड फॉर्मेशन तक एंडोस्पम कंप्लीटली कंज्यूम हो जाता है 
okay then in that case we called as non endospermic seed like your broad bean pea groundnut okay just look at this there is no endosperm here the complete endosperm has been absorbed by the growing embryo so the embryo has utilized all the food material of the endosperm so this kind of seed is called non albuminous seed second is endospermic seed or albuminous seed yahan dekhiye some part of the endosperm is left this these are endosperm cells so if the endo some part of the endosperm is there or you can say if the seed has some residual cytoplasm residual endosperm okay if a seed has residual endosperm okay residual endosperm then that seed will be called as endospermic or non albuminous seed for example your maize wheat castor and sunflower they all have endospermic seeds means in the seed some amount of endosperm is also present now compare the non endospermic and endospermic seed just look at this it is yet this yellow portion is your endosperm here there is endosperm is there but here there is no endosperm okay so plumule is formed radicle is formed and the growth will start this is how growth starts in a broad bean and this in case of a maize so maize will utilize this food during the germination process okay it will utilize the food during the germination process in some cases some new cells is also present you know what is new cells okay right so in some species some uh, in, during the seed formation some amount of new cells is also present and this residual new cells is called perisperm okay in some seeds like your black pepper and beet some amount of new cells is also present and this new cells is called perisperm now after fertilization what will happen your integuments they will form the seed coat the micropyle end will be called as seed pore the ovules they will form the seed ovary will form the fruit and the wall of the ovary is called pericarp so wall of the ovary will called the pericarp now there are two types or rather i should say there are three types of fruits we can categorize the fruits into three basic types one is true fruits second is false fruits and third is parthenocarpic fruits fruit is generally formed from the ovary okay so true fruit fruit means jisme sirf ovary hoti hai right they only develop from the ovary right everyone they only develop from the ovary false fruit mein kya hota hai ovary ke sath sath some amount of thalamus also participate thalamus also participate in in fruit formation like your apple okay in your apple strawberry and cashew nuts ovary plus some amount of thalamus they both participate in the fruit formation so this will be called a false fruit there are a few species of plant where fruit is formed without fertilization okay Fru fruit is formed without fertilization and the best example is banana right and this the these these fruits they will be called as parthenocarpic fruits what do we call them parthenocarpic fruits now this parthenocarpic process can be induced by application of certain growth hormones auxins right they can be induced parthenon can be parthenocarpy can be induced in some plants with the application of some hormones and auxin and the fruits the such fruits they are seedless jo fruits produce hote hain wo aapke seedless fruits hote hain okay they are called seedless fruits what do we call them as seedless fruits now seeds basically has number of advantages okay seeds basically has number of advantages first the reproductive processes such as pollination and fertilization they are independent of water jo aapka reproductive process hai jaise ki pollination seed formation uh, 
पॉलिनेशन ऑफ फर्टिलाइजेशन ये पानी पे डिपेंडेंट होते हैं पानी पे डिपेंडेंट नहीं होते हैं जबकि आपका जो सीड फॉर्मेशन है इट डिपेंड्स ऑन वाटर सेकेंडली सीड्स हैव अ बेटर बेटर स्ट्रैटेजी फॉर देयर डिस्पर्जल टू न्यू हैबिटैट्स सीड्स की जो डिस्पर्जल स्ट्रैटेजी है वो बेटर है इन कंपेरिजन टू एनी अदर एंड मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट दे हेल्प अ स्पीशीज टू कॉलोनाइज द न्यू एरियाज ओके दे हेल्प अ स्पीशीज टू कॉलोनाइज अ न्यू एरिया बिकॉज दे कंटेन लार्ज अमाउंट ऑफ फूड मटीरियल इन साइड दी इन साइड द सीड ओके एंड दे हैव अ हार्ड सीड कोड विच प्रोवाइड्स द प्रोटेक्शन टू द ग्रोइंग एम्ब्रियो क्लियर so they they are covered with hard coating which is called your seed coat and this seed coat helps them to protect from the unfavorable conditions then comes apomixis apomixis means formation of seed without fertilization theek okay? hai formation of seed without fertilization like in some species of grasses okay some species of in some species of grasses seeds are formed without fertilization and this process is called apomixis what do we call it as apomixis so your apomixis is basically a asexual reproduction it is basically a form of asexual reproduction but it appears to be a sexual reproduction to ye aapka ek tarike ka asexual reproduction hai but aisa lagta hai ki wo sexual reproduction hai theek hai clear ओके चलिए अंडरस्टूड दिस वन दिस कॉन्सेप्ट इज क्लियर टू एवरी वन सो एपोमिक्स इज मीन्स फॉर्मेशन ऑफ सीड विदाउट फर्टिलाइजेशन नो इन सम स्पीशीज डिप्लॉयड एग इज फॉर्म्ड ठीक है कुछ स्पीशीज हैं जहां पर डिप्लॉयड एग बन जाता है बिकॉज उनमें रिडक्शन डिविजन नहीं होता है एंड रिडक्शन डिविजन ना होने की वजह से ये डिप्लॉयड एग से ही एम्ब्रियो फॉर्म होता है विदाउट फर्टिलाइजेशन जैसा कि सिट्रस और मैंगो की वेराइटीज में होता है ओके दिस हैपन्स इन द वेराइटीज ऑफ मैंगो एंड सिट्रस फ्रूट्स ठीक है ओके सो बेसिकली आई कैन से एम्ब्रियो सैक नॉर्मल है डिप्लॉयड कंडीशन में है मियोसिस नहीं हुआ ठीक है एम्ब्रियो वॉज डिप्लॉयड एंड देर वॉज नो मियोसिस सेकेंड कंडीशन इज हेप्लॉयड एग है देन हेप्लॉयड एग विल विल रिजल्ट इन द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ एम्ब्रियो एंड विल फॉर्म अ डिप्लॉयड न्यूक्लिया इन द एम्ब्रियो सो एग तो न्यूक्लियाप्लॉयड था लेकिन जैसे जैसे उसकी ग्रोथ होती है सो एम्ब्रियो में वो डिप्लॉयड कंडीशन में पहुंच जाता है ठीक है थर्ड कंडीशन कुड बी वन एम्ब्रियो डिवेलप्स फ्रॉम द न्यू सेलस और द इंटेग्यूमेंट्स सो दिस पॉसिबिलिटी इज ऑल्सो दे पॉली एम्ब्रियोनी जेनरली एक सीड के अंदर वन सीड कंटेन्स वन एम्ब्रियो ओके वन सीड कंटेन्स वन एम्ब्रियो बट इफ देर आर मोर देन वन एम्ब्रियो इज प्रेजेंट इन द सीड देन वी कॉल इट एज पॉली एम्ब्रियोनी ठीक है एक सीड के अंदर सिर्फ एक एम्ब्रियो होता है लेकिन अगर एक सीड के अंदर एक एम्ब्रियो से ज्यादा एम्ब्रियो प्रेजेंट है तो इस कंडीशन को हम पॉली एम्ब्रियोनी कहते हैं ओके इज इट क्लियर राइट सो जाइगोट विल फॉर्म द प्रो एम्ब्रियो एंड दे विल फॉर्म द टू यूनिट्स दैट विल अगेन कंबाइन टू फॉर्म द एम्ब्रियो स्टेज द एम्ब्रियो फ्रॉम अदर पार्ट ऑफ द एम्ब्रियो सैक देन एग अब ऐसा कैसे हो सकता है कि जो सिनर्जिड्स हैं आपके प्लांट के सेल में द सिजर्ड सिनर्जिड्स दे ऑल्सो स्टार्ट फॉर्मिंग द एम्ब्रियोज जनरली क्या होता है एग के साथ फ्यूजन होता है और वहाँ से एम्ब्रियो बनता है लेकिन यहाँ पर सिनर्जिड्स आपस में फ्यूज होकर एम्ब्रियो सेक बना रहे हैं या जाइगोट ने एम्ब्रियो बनाया प्रो एम्ब्रियो बनाया इट फॉर्म टू एम्ब्रियो प्रो एम्ब्रियोज एंड देन ईच वन ऑफ देम दे फॉर्म द एम्ब्रियो Sometimes the cells of the new cells and the integuments they form the embryo. That is in case of citrus and mango, as I was talking about a few seconds before. Right? 
and if there are multiple embryo sacs in the ovule they all will be fertilized right they all will be fertilized so polyembryony means presence of more than one embryo in the seed okay that is called the polyembryony clear everyone that is called the polyembryony now coming to your homework dear students with this topic we finish your chapter number 2 so you will revise thoroughly this chapter and you will learn all question answers of this chapter 2 okay ye chapter 2 jo hai iske aap sare questions bahut acche se revise karenge differentiate karenge between microsporogenesis megasporogenesis then you there are certain most important diagrams in the chapter wo draw karke dekhenge like your embryo sac where there is seven cell stage and eight nuclear stages there so that also is a very very important diagram so you will revise this chapter thoroughly everyone okay with this we are finishing your chapter number 2 so uh, that's all from my side and dear students if you have any query you will send your queries on my personal number and i 100% try to solve your problems right okay that's all from side bye everyone